Nah, the third sutta is called Atta Rakita Sutta. Or Atana Rakita Sutta. The discourse on the self protector. S3.5. The theme, the best security is that of body and mind. Okay? The best way to how to best protect our body and mind. <clears throat> Originating in Sawati. Verse 1, sitting at one side, Raja Pasinadi of Kosala said this to the Blessed One. Here, Bhante, while I was alone in seclusion, solitary retreat, this thought arose in my mind. Who now protect themselves? Who now, who leaves themselves unprotected? Then, Bhante, it occurred to me. Those who conduct themselves badly through body, conduct themselves badly through speech, conduct themselves badly through the mind, leave themselves unprotected. Even though a company of elephants or a company of cavalry, a company of chariots or chariot troops, or a company of infantry, these are called the fourfold army, eh? may protect them, they still leave themselves unprotected. For what reason? For their protection is external, not internal. Therefore, they leave themselves unprotected. This is a king talking, you know. He said, you may have an army protect you, all this four, fourfold army. But if, if you do bad things, you're still not protected. Because those external protection, inside you're not protected. Internal and external. Yeah? This uh, fourfold army is called Chaturanga. Chaturanga. And from the word Chaturanga, you get the word Chatur, which is the Malay word for chess. You know chess, you got this... Uh, it's like, like a warring game, you know, right? So it started in India, right? It's called uh, Chatur. All right, so then the king reflects, continues, 4.1. But those who conduct themselves well through the body, conduct themselves well through speech, conduct themselves well through the mind, they are those who protect themselves. Even though no company of elephants, no company of cavalry, no company of chariots or chariot troops, no company of infantry protect them. They still do protect themselves. What is the reason for this? For their protection is internal, not external. Therefore, they do protect themselves. You're probably thinking of the Buddha, you know, and the Buddha got no army around him, right? Yet, the Buddha feels safe. And you remember how the Buddha helped Angulimala? The Buddha has no army. The Buddha yet could convert Angulimala from being a serial killer to a, become a monk, renuncium. Whereas the king has his 100 soldiers is going to look for this bandit, Angulimala, and they're not sure where they can capture him, he's so powerful. You know? So the king is so amazed that the Buddha, without any weapon and, and, and physical power, could overcome someone so violent and powerful like Angulimala. So this is one of his reflections. So the Buddha says, 5.1, So it is, Maharaja, so it is, Maharaja. Those who conduct themselves badly to the body, conduct themselves badly to speech, conduct themselves badly to the mind, even though a company of elephants, or a company of cavalry, or a company of chariots, or chariot troops, or a company of infantry may protect them still, they leave themselves unprotected. For what reason? For Maharaja, their protection is external, not internal. Therefore, they leave themselves unprotected. But Maharaja, those who conduct themselves well to the body, conduct themselves well to speech, conduct themselves well to the mind, even though no company of elephants, no company of cavalry, no company of chariots or chariot troops, no company of infantry protect them, they still do protect themselves. What is the reason for this? For their protection is internal, not external. Therefore, they do protect themselves. Then the Buddha closes with the verse. Kāyena sangvaro sādhu, sādhu vācāya sangvaro, manasa sangvaro sādhu, sādhu sabbatta sangvaro, sabbatta sanguto lajji rakkito ti pavucca ti ti. So this is a, a very beautiful verse. I think this is the same style as the Dhammapada, no? what's called this uh, sloka. Good is restraint of the body. Good is restraint of the body specifically refers to keeping the first three precepts. 
first three precepts. First precept, not killing, not stealing, no sexual misconduct, restraint of body. Good is restraint of speech. This is the fourth precept. Okay, there are many other things. These are the basic ideas. Good is the restraint of the mind. Holding back the mind, like you hold back a horse. Eh? That is the fourth precept. Uh, sorry, fifth precept, as well as meditation. So here you have the first part is Sila Sikha, training in moral virtue. The second one is Samadhi Sikha, training in mental cultivation. That's the meaning. Eh? Restraint is everywhere good. The conscientious or the diligent, someone who is morally careful, are everywhere restrained. He is said to be protected. In other words, if you keep your precepts well, you are internally protected. You are safe. In other words, you will not be blamed for any, any of your actions. Even if you are blamed, it is false. Ultimately, you will be vindicated somehow. You have nothing to fear. Okay. So these are very simple teachings given originating with the king, also connected with Queen Malika, and the teachings are all noticed towards the end endorsed by the Buddha. Right? So we see so we regard them as Buddha but also. So I hope these teachings make you feel good, make you feel connected, inspire you also to to raise the quality of your life, to stay more at peace with yourself. All right, let's spend a bit of time. Questions, we have about 20 minutes of questions. Mm -hmm. Regarding lying, telling yes. lies, yeah. see, if someone asks you a question regarding some happening, mm -hmm. and then we don't want to tell the truth because if we tell the truth, something yes. will get to trouble. Yes. So, what should we do? Good. Okay. The Buddha faced such a situation with King Pasenadi. Since we are doing Pasenadi, might as well use the master story. Queen Malika passed away. Queen Malika at one point did something rather bad, a moment of lapse. Then somehow she felt so guilty, she was so ashamed she did not tell anyone about it. But when she was passing away, she thought about it. So because of that, she was reborn in a hell state. And that hell state, hell birth lasts for seven human days. That means it's a very long time. In hell time, very long time. Human time, seven days. So after the king, the, after the queen died, the next day, the king asked the Buddha, where is Malika reborn? In hell. <laughs> so, so the Buddha, the, the Buddha, one of the rules the Buddha follow, if something is bad, not worth telling, he won't tell it. So he changed the subject. He changed the subject and the king forgot about it. He thought about something happy. So for seven days, the, the king asked and then or rather the king, I'm going to ask, the king asked when he forgot about it, Buddha changed the subject, okay? The Buddha didn't answer. On the, after the seventh day, the karma finished, so Malika was reborn in heaven, he stayed. And the king asked again. Then Buddha said, oh, okay, this question, yeah? Queen Malika is reborn <laughs> in the heavens. And the king is very happy. So the Buddha never told him the queen was spent seven days suffering in hell. Not necessary, because this king is still not awakened, so it might be troubled by it. So it's okay to withhold the truth in this kind of situation, where it won't benefit the listener, and you have nothing to gain from it except good. Right? That's one way. Right? Another way is to tell in such a way that uh, it will comfort the person. Let's say you're a doctor, and then you know this person is dying, it's got only another month or a few months more to go. Of course, you won't be foolish enough and say, oh, you know, I'm a Buddhist doctor, i got to tell you the truth, you know, and you're going to die. And it's probably get a shock if I die on the spot, you know. So it'd be rather unwise, right? So the doctor will be kind of compassionate. It, of course, yeah, assuming this person is really afraid to die, so the doctor will say, don't worry, we'll take good care of you, you know. And these are things we can't really know, something like that. So that is a safe way of answering comforting the person. If the person cannot take the truth right away. Of course, the person insists, that, oh, I'm okay, you know, and as say it was a monk, or like, then, yeah, of course, that's up to you. Yeah. yeah, okay? So always consider, 
well, this truth, some, sometimes things are true, but whether are they helpful or not? Will they hurt or not, right? So, so the Buddha says, Kalena, very important, at the right time. At the right time is very important. Yeah? And of course, the right person also. <coughs> Short reflection. When we gather here together, we talk openly and honestly with concern for our own future in the Dharma. This will be very important for our future, for the people who come after us, because we are laying the groundwork for more involvement, direct involvement by local people in the Buddha's teaching. This is something we have to work hard at. In other words, we want direct access to the Dharma. We want more full participation in the Dharma. In other words, we want to keep the Dharma inside us so that we become happy and at peace, and awaken ourselves. And this is possible if we practice what the Sutta teaches, we understand the Sutta. Reflecting in this way is very good karma. With the power of such karma, may we attain all the blessings in this life itself, be at peace with ourselves, be blessed with prosperity and good health and long life to do the Dharma work. Above all, by all these good deeds we have done through our faith in the Triple Gem, our keeping of the precepts, our practice of generosity and many other good deeds, may we attain spiritual awakening, especially stream winning. In this moment of peace, let us send out our loving kindness to all those people working here. May they have all the strength to face all the challenges. May they work with generosity and wisdom. May we share our loving kindness to all our loved ones. May they be well and happy. And to those whom the Dhamma have not touched, that the Dhamma may awaken them too. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.